come to one of the conventions. I said that to Deb. I was like, I'm going to go to conventions. And like, <laughs> have you been to the floor? No, I haven't. Yeah. Put a costume on. Oh, how cool would that be to do it? Everybody dress up as Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I pay money to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Just need to date me. Let's start off by like when did you first stumble upon this these books and what went through your mind when you first read them? Yeah. Did you know them before this role? I actually didn't. Um, I was just laughing about the fact that I have three sons and so I haven't read since they were born. I haven't read anything since they were born. So I think they came out right as I was having children. So I um I didn't I wasn't familiar with the books, but I read the script. And instantly I became obsessed with it. I couldn't stop reading it. I rang my agent and I said, what is going on with this? How can I get involved? He set me up with Jane Trantor. And Jane was just this brilliant woman who spoke so passionately about the world. She knew the characters back to front, inside out, and she really set it up for me. And um, I left that meeting just feeling like she was my character. I had to be Diana. I felt so connect connected to her in every way. And so I met with Matthew Good, who was already cast. And we we're going to do like a an hour and a half workshop, a chemistry read, just to make sure that we got on and we had some chemistry, because obviously that's a pivotal part of our story. We wanted to you know, make sure that, that we fit together. And straight away we were laughing, straight off the bat. We were just such goofballs together, we're like brother and sister, really interacting in a way that felt organic and fluid and we just put the scenes down and um, I remember Kate, our casting director, is like, guys, like we actually have to get some work done, we have to fun talking with each other, but we do have to film some of the scenes. So it, from day one, it was like that between Matthew and I and, you know, we're both so thrilled to be a part of the show. Yeah, and then I read the books after that book. Yes, which was brilliant. And um, actually, I, it was an audio book that I listened to because, again, the reading for me, I'm constantly being interrupted by little people. But in the car, they're strapped in and they can't interrupt me and I have my audio book on. So that's how I read the books. So you say you connected with Diana really quickly. What qualities did that, you know, made you connect with her? I just loved her passion. Mm -hmm. um, I loved her commitment. I thought she was this beautiful flower where she's a, a hyper-intellectual woman, yet she was denying this whole other side of her life and her being. And I, I loved her, the vulnerability in that and um, the fragility in that and I just felt such potential uh, that she had so much potential and she just had to lean into it and the further along I got into the book I just became so proud of her and how she started to unravel and she blossoms into her authentic self and I can really relate to that journey. I think even any of us, you know, from the ages, you know, when we're teenagers to when we enter into our later 20s and 30s, gosh, we're all over the place when we're younger and then you finally land into a, a, a space in your life where you're feeling good about yourself and you're leaning into who you are and I felt like she took that journey in that first book and I loved that. It was a beautiful story. If I could piggyback off that question, you mentioned this already, that part of what drew you to the character of Diana is this sort of innate tension um, within herself between you know the academic, the scientist, the historian, versus the supernatural yeah. being. So how would you say that tension sort of manifests in your portrayal of, of the character? Uh, it's quite interesting because she'll be in the middle of doing a lecture or just about to go and have a lecture, but magic pops out in a crazy way. And I think that that's, you know, this swinging pendulum. She's trying to keep this at bay, but it is who she is and it keeps coming out and then it starts escalating it's coming out more and more and more and she doesn't have such a tight grip on it anymore and i love that um because it's just organic it's just it's bound to happen and um 
I think you you see that journey. Yeah, and then we get into the spoiler territory very quickly. Yeah, <laughs> he's such, like, don't a, say it. Such, no, but it is such a difficult question to talk about it because I mean it's amazing. And wait till you see it. I think, yeah. um, there's there's so much more to film, uh, and also you know, the Sierra names involvement in it as well. Uh, once you get to sort of five, six, seven, eight, it's yeah. It rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about, we saw some of the scenes of the panel, but like talk about filming some of the magical stuff, what you can say, but like how is it? Oh, to... I probably already blew it on that table. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, this, this, this. She was like, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> No, but it's, the reason I, the reason I, I, I mention it is just because obviously we want to keep certain things away from the fans. Sure. But, um, but, but of course we can. Um, but they, you know, they don't come out in the first. There's, there's small moments in the first episode, but then by the end of the third episode. Well, they, it's, yeah, it's it takes it to another level, which is the most powerful witch there is. Um, and I think my idea of witchcraft is it's smaller than what she can do. It's like you do some spells, and that's it. Like I grew up watching the craft, um, but this is just takes it to a whole other level. Of, um, her power is so immense, it's, it really is otherworldly. Um, and I won't spoil it anymore, but you just just wait. Like episode from episode six onwards, you start to see things that will absolutely blow your mind. Also, what, You've all probably really, read the book, so you know what I'm talking about. But what I find particularly exciting about the way the magic manifests itself is also Matthew's relationship to the magic, because uh, he's aware, uh, because he's been around for so many hundreds and hundreds of years. He understands magic, um, and he knows how rare it is to find a witch that has the powers that Diana has. I think um, he's quite shocked yes. as well at the level of power that yeah. she has. It's so exciting for him and enticing, but wow, it's, it's um, yeah. I think it's also hard for him to say that too, in a sense. So if we see her with all these extreme powers when she's suppressing it will we see these powers possibly grow as she starts to embrace it more yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a tight knot yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay can you talk about yeah. how they're shot like is it practical stuff or is practical. it a lot of imagining for you is that oh, like, there's some, it's a, it's a common, I mean principally uh, especially early on um, we use a lot of practical elements so, so for example um, one of the sequences involved wire rigs because there's nothing better than actually having your character fly through frame without it feeling created in, in VFX. So um, we, but obviously, we, you know, we do use, yeah, obviously we do use uh, VFX, um, but it's more to supplement um, what's the actually there. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to, a, I got to be on some wires. Yeah. It's not spoiling anything. No, no, it's not. On some wires um, towards the end and. It's fun, I had a, a day of being upside down and in the woods on a wire. Well. In the woods? Oh, that was so fun yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, the woods was great. I was upside down. My la my very last scene of the entire show was the blue screen and I was upside down on a wire. Hanging up, making noises for eight hours, yeah. <laughs> with the jet engine in your face. Yeah, oh my, that's right, yeah, with the huge um, industrial fan like blowing at me. <laughs> so do you have any funny moments in, um, on set, any yes. prankers? Matthews, <laughs> just so, a legend. He's such a goofball, yeah. He, him and I, there's a scene in the show say what scene it is. But there was Matthew and I have really funny banter together. So we're constantly laughing and mucking around and goofballing around. I don't know if you were there that day when we were in the forest. We had the scene where we talking about my father's yes. ability. Um, so we couldn't stop laughing. And for about an hour and a half we kept trying to film the scene but we just were laughing the whole way through the scene to the point where the director was like well I think we're just gonna have to make this scene a funny scene <laughs> we got we just couldn't play it straight and that was our kind of relationship so and that happened many times there was a there's a moment in this book um, I'll show you the image that we're talking about he asked me to describe the book and I I talked to him about you know, that I saw a picture of the alchemical child floating upside down in a vessel 
And for some reason, Matthew thought that that line was the funniest line he'd ever heard. <laughs> that on his close-up, he would ask me not to say the line. So he's like, I will just react, you don't say the line. And vice versa, he would have to turn around and I'd have to do it to his back because we were making each other laugh so much. So it just, yeah, we really had a fantastic time and it was a, a lot of laughing went on. I think there's a, just a great sort of camaraderie with the team that were making the show um, and, and I think it's a testament to especially our cast and crew because um, there was just that, that bond there and I think when people work together and invest in what they're doing and enjoy what they're doing, it just makes it an amazing experience and I think it shows on the screen. Mm -hmm. That's important. Can you talk about the tone as well? What tone are you hoping for with the show? Well, the, the tone, it was an interesting, it's a really interesting question because the tone, um, we've gone on a journey with the tone because at the beginning, because we, we wanted to set the show up in a way that felt grounded uh, and really rooted uh, in present day and in a world where humans exist alongside creatures. Um, so we went on a journey to, in the early episodes to not have a lot of magic, um, but obviously as we get later on in the series, it, you know, it, it, we're flying. Takes off. <laughs> we're flying. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> But it, it like it is it's well, it's one of the game. elements that you get. It's a romance. It, it, well, it's a contemporary. Yeah. I think the, you know, one of the elements, the strong elements, is it's a contemporary love story uh, between Matthew and Anna. So I think you, you can you can't escape from that. But there's also uh, even a strong thriller element with the manuscript because everyone believes that the answers are held within the book. Uh, and as, as uh, Owen, who plays Peter Knox, was saying, he's got this vision that if he can find the book, he'll find out how vampires were created. And if he knows how they were created, then he can uncreate them. Because... Which I don't want any part of happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Great scene. Yeah, it does. <laughs> working on a show and obviously it's yet to air so you haven't quite seen the reaction yet but where it has such a devoted fan base of people who are just very passionate about it. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> no, because I think yeah. you know we, we always we want to serve the audience ultimately but we're not making a show for ourselves um, and that's why we work very closely with Deb because um, you know that transition from the page to the screen is such a long journey that you go on and and what works on the page because you've got the benefit of first person narration it means that you're able to describe a world whereas you can't do that uh, in television so with some of the aspects of the show we've maybe gone a little bit further into the book and pulled some story uh, from later in the book um, towards the beginning because it means we can set up the world and we can set up the characters um, and it just felt like the right way to approach it. I also have found it just thrilling to have this kind of energy behind the series. Uh, I remember when I got cast I looked at my Instagram and I, it had like jumped up a hundred thousand people and I was like what? <laughs> and then I started seeing like All Souls and then like Demon's Domain and um, and then I started interacting with a lot of the people behind these accounts and just the support has been phenomenal. The excitement is just an of another level and it, it just helps me want to be the best I possibly can be and tell the, the most authentic story. And, and um, I, I think we all really appreciate the support of the fans and um, you can feel it. I feel it. I remember being on set and like the comments on my Instagram and my interactions, it just, it makes you feel good and makes you want to do your very best work. And I like today meeting everyone here, it's, it's been wonderful. It makes me so excited to finally get the show out and, and get them to all the patiently waiting fans who are um, We finally got it so in the US I know. <laughs> Oh my god, I think that's probably the number one question I keep getting asked yeah. on my Instagram. That was my number one question. Where, where will we be in the US? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about your first meeting with the author as well? Did you have lots of questions for her? Were you oh, yeah. what, was the, what came through your mind and what did you... Um, well, she is the warmest person that I've ever met in my life. She's just one big ball of love. And she came and gave me this big bear hug. She was like, you are my Diane. <laughs> um, and I actually see a lot of Diana in Deb 
actually, just the way she is and her being, and obviously Deb's a historian, and she's a rower, and there are, they have a lot of similarities, and um, just to be, she had unwavering support and faith in me, and to go, come into a series with, you know, a lot of eyes on it, and have the author, the, the one who wrote these characters, um, be so loving and giving, uh, it just made my job so much easier. And I had her on speed dial. I could call her at any time. She was also on set a lot. And I could say, how would I play this? Or what do you think of mindset? Is, uh, am I going down the right track? This is how I'm feeling. And she was just so generous and open and communicative and a, the most beautiful blessing ever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I was going to tell you, when she was here, she was giving good compliments about you. Yeah. Oh, she's exactly how I pictured you. She's, like, oh. she's exactly how I pictured even the eyes, everything. She oh, yeah. She thinks I should like this. You look like you've walked out on a box. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to see the fans' response when you know, your picture was released because oh, they were just so nuclearly excited. It was really funny because I didn't understand, but they were like, we got it.